Welcome back to another edition of the High Yield Video Question Bank series. This is the video series where I give you practice questions out of my own dirty medicine question bank to help train your brain to recognize high yield patterns. Again, the goal here is to train your brain to think like how someone taking the test should be thinking if they're going to approach, attack, and dissect high yield lines of questions. The goal here is to present you with material, show it to you before you actually take the exam so that when you're sitting for the real USMLE or the real Comlex, you're prepared because you've already seen the question before or your brain has already had to go through this line of thinking and reason through something similar. So let's get going with practice question number 14. A 68 year old male presents to your office for his routine annual visit. He says that since his wife died 13 months ago, he has not been himself. He says, quote, I'm barely able to leave the house without crying. Since her passing, he has stopped going to his church group, stopped visiting his grandchildren, and often even hears his deceased wife's voice calling out to him. He reports that he's sleeping fine, he has adequate energy, a normal appetite, is able to concentrate, and denies any suicidal ideation. Which of the following is the correct diagnosis in this patient? A, normal grief. B, pathologic grief. C, major depressive disorder. D, adjustment disorder. Or E, generalized anxiety disorder. If you would like some time to think about this question and try to answer it on your own before I start explaining it, pause the video now. And if you're ready, let's go through this. So first, the correct answer here is B. This is actually pathologic grief. And before I tell you exactly why that is, I think it's important to highlight a couple sentences or phrases in the vignette, and then we'll go through what each of those phrases reveals to you when you're someone who's answering this question. So I've highlighted three parts of the question here, one part in red, one part in green, and one part in blue. You'll notice that the red text says that his wife died 13 months ago. And that's really important because a lot of these questions, especially for the topic of psychiatry, the timeline matters. How many months or weeks have passed since some type of stressor or symptom has started is really important. In green, what you notice is that the question is telling you that since the wife passed away, the patient stopped going to his church group, stopped visiting his grandchildren. And the reason that this is important is because this part of the question highlighted in green represents a functional impairment, right? Normally, when somebody dies and a loved one is grieving, normal grief does not have functional impairment where the person either has problems with anything in their activities of daily living or are part of their normal routine but when that in, when the impairment or when the grief reaches the level that it starts to prevent you from doing things that you normally do that is when it crosses the threshold into pathologic territory the blue text shows you that he's sleeping fine has adequate energy has a normal appetite has normal concentration and denies suicidal ideation and what that's telling you is that the patient does not have the symptoms of major depressive disorder. So those are some of the SIG E CAPS symptoms. And if you're not sure what I'm referring to when I say that, please see my video on major depressive disorder to learn about what those symptoms are. But when you're going through this, what you can discern is that, okay, the wife passed away 13 months ago. That's in red. In green, the patient is starting to have impairment in his normal lifestyle functioning that's in green and in blue he doesn't meet the criteria for major depressive disorder because he's denying those symptoms so because of that we can rule out c it's not major depressive disorder and we can rule out that it's a normal grief because not only did the patient's wife die 13 months ago and we'll talk about on the next slide what the timeline typically looks like but it's starting to impair his life and when you have functional impairment that's when the answer is going to be pathologic grief now, I'll talk about D and E, adjustment disorder and generalized anxiety disorder, a little bit later in this video. But if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I'm still not quite comfortable with grief versus pathologic grief versus MDD versus possibly even adjustment or generalized anxiety, well then, let's transition now and talk about grief. So when you think about grief, we can separate it into two types of grief. There's normal grief and pathologic grief. Now, this isn't so cut and dry, this isn't very black and white, but typically, on the, for the purposes of USMLE and COMLEX, you can make certain assumptions. And those assumptions will be based on the timeline, the findings, 
and whether or not there's functional impairment. So this is how you're gonna differentiate these two on your questions. So as far as timeline goes, typically normal grief will last up to a year. If it persists beyond a year, chances are that the test writer wants you to think about pathologic grief. After 12 months, it would be somewhat abnormal to continue to grieve for somebody, okay? Can it happen? Yes. But on USMLE and Comelex, will it happen? No. Let's talk about the findings. Now, what's important is that for both normal grief and pathologic grief, you're going to see sadness, anxiety, apathy, and wanting to be with the deceased. The other thing that's really high yield to point out is that it is perfectly normal and acceptable to have hallucinations. So classically, these questions will tell you that the patient hears the voice of his loved one calling out to him. And that is not evidence of a psychotic disorder. That's part of normal grief, okay? It's normal. Now, what's not normal? What is pathologic? Well, pathologic grief will have the same exact findings as normal grief, but what really separates it is that the person wants to die. And the reason that they want to die is not just to be with their loved one who also passed away. So let me explain. This is an example of normal grief. If the patient tells you, I just want my life to end so that I can be with her again, that is normal grief. What's not normal? What's not normal would be if the patient said, I just want to die. And there's no modifier or explanation that he wants to die to be with the loved one. He just wants to die because he's so sad. Okay, that is more of a suicidal ideation type of wanting to die. Whereas in normal grief, wanting to die simply just to be with your deceased loved one is perfectly normal and acceptable. And that's part of normal grief. So to summarize, just to really hammer this home, in normal grief, you'll see sadness, anxiety, apathy, wanting to die specifically to be with the loved one who passed away and hallucinations. In pathologic grief, you'll have all the same stuff, but instead of wanting to die just to be with your loved one, you'll want to die because you're just so sad or depressed. That's pathologic grief. And then the last one, is there functional impairment in normal grief? No. In pathologic grief, yes. And functional impairment could be things like, you know, your activities of daily living don't you know, don't function the right way anymore. So you, you can't shower, you can't bathe, you can't feed yourself. It could also be things like not going to your church group or not hanging out with friends or not seeing other family members. As soon as you start to change your normal lifestyle, we're transitioning into pathologic grief. So keep these themes in mind when you're thinking normal grief and when you're thinking pathologic grief. Now let's go back to our question. So we've talked about A versus B, normal versus pathologic grief. Now let's talk about C through E. So the other options were major depressive disorder, adjustment disorder, and generalized anxiety disorder. So what might have I written in the question stem if I wanted you to pick C, D, or E? Well, for major depressive disorder, you have to have at least five SIG ECAP symptoms for at least two weeks. And if that is confusing to you, then I have a whole video on major depressive disorder. Please go check that out. But just briefly, what does SIG ECAP stand for? Uh, S is sleep, I is interest, G is guilt, E is energy, C is concentration, A is appetite, P is psychomotor changes, and S is suicidality. So if you have at least five symptoms or five changes in those domains for at least two weeks, then you qualify for major depressive disorder. Now, what's important to take away from that? Well, in somebody who's grieving, it doesn't matter how much time has gone by. If at any point in the grieving process, they meet full criteria for major depressive disorder, it doesn't matter if they're having hallucinations, where they are in their grief timeline-wise, if there's functional impairment, if they meet the criteria for MDD, the answer is MDD, plain and simple. Adjustment disorder, don't worry about what needs to happen to diagnose somebody with adjustment disorder, but just when you think about adjustment disorder, think about anxiety symptoms resulting from some stressor that lasts for no more than six months. So classically, what you could see as examples of adjustment disorder is somebody gets fired from their job and then about three months later, they start to have anxiety, okay? If that anxiety lasts between zero to six months, it's adjustment disorder. And then as soon as those anxiety symptoms last beyond six months, it becomes generalized anxiety disorder. So generalized anxiety disorder, by definition, cannot be diagnosed unless the symptoms last for more than six months. And the reason that that's the case is because if it's less than six months, it's adjustment disorder. Okay, so 
uh, both adjustment disorder and generalized anxiety disorder, but especially adjustment disorder, are usually temporally related to the onset of some stressor. And then the symptoms will occur within three months of that stressor and last for no more than six months in the case of adjustment disorder or greater than six months in the case of generalized anxiety disorder. But in this question stem, there was no particular stressor and resulting anxiety symptoms. And therefore the answer is not adjustment and it's not generalized anxiety. The other thing is that because this patient's wife died 13 months ago and presumably he's had symptoms for 13 months, it definitely can't be adjustment disorder because those symptoms would have to last, uh, last for less than six months. And in the case of generalized anxiety disorder, you would need to see more anxiety spectrum symptoms. And I'm not giving you in the question anxiety symptoms. So that's why D and E are not the correct answer. But guys and girls, that's it. Remember the big takeaway is this slide. What's normal grief? and what's pathologic grief. Remember again, just to really hit this home, hallucinations are fine, sadness, anxiety, apathy, fine. Wanting to die if the reason is because you wanna be with your loved one, that's fine. But what's not fine is if you want to die just because you're sad or suicidal, that's pathologic, or if it lasts more than 12 months or starts to lead to functional impairment. So that is grief. I hope that this was helpful. Keep up the strong work. These questions, especially psychiatry questions, will pop up on USMLE and Comlex all the time.